Today in the show we have Verify by Fox on Polygon, Arbitrum Custom Fees, Bank Derive and Solana Pay, and much more. I'm your host Mauricio Magaldi and this is Block Drops, your weekly digest on blockchain for business. These news are not a form of endorsement, sponsorship or encouragement for consumption and are meant for educational purposes only. Those of you who've been following for a longer time uh, might recall me saying AI needs blockchain. And I say this in a very specific uh, context. The AI is about data, right? AI is all about data. And it's also about all the data that we've been offering over the last 30 years over the internet. So that's the corpus, the data that's used to train AI. But all of that data, uh, it's just spread out and it's not traceable to anything. Uh, and even if it's traceable, it's obviously um, debatable, right? Arguably traceable. So blockchains, by its very own nature of providing immutable, traceable public data, serve serve to increase the amount of one, how we determine origin, but also how we determine how trustworthy the data is. So in that sense, uh, this piece of news that came this week um, sounded very promising, right? Uh, Fox Corporation, arguably one of the largest media conglomerates in the world, is taking uh, on their own hands the um, task to uh, not fight, but address the challenges of ensuring provable provenance uh, for um, media to avoid the risk of AI-generated media uh, populating um, all over the internet uh, with important election years um, ahead, both in the U.S., also in Brazil. Uh, we're all worried about how the deep fake and the fake news powered by AI are going to influence how uh, politics uh, is made in the world and it has been affecting. So Verify, uh, which has been launched in a closed beta back in August of last year, has already tagged cryptographically uh, 89,000 pieces of content, both text and images. Um, they are all signed to Verify from uh, sources within the Fox News conglomerate, like Fox News, Fox Business, Fox Sports, and also Fox TV affiliates. Uh, the announcement comes as the protocol is being open source, and that will allow the public to obviously uh, contribute to the source code, even fork the source code. That's how open source software works. And media companies can go to verify um, to know how to use it, to ta you know, tag their own uh, pieces of content uh, or even validate pieces of content that they have received uh, while consumers can go to the tool to confirm whether a digital piece of content uh, from the Fox News uh, participants is a valid source, right? This is being developed by the Fox technology team, is being built on the Polygon POS, the proof of stake sidechain of Ethereum, and it's aiming to not single-handedly, but become a part of how AI-generated text and images will be traceable to the original material that's being published online. The thing is, uh, this is not the first attempt to such a tool. The New York Times has tried it before. The Associated Press has timed it before. There are other solutions from startups that have tried this. But the big challenge is not the, technology, the technological challenge, it's more on the human side of things. Uh, as humans, researchers show that we are inclined to share fake news seven times faster than we would share a trustworthy piece of news, which means that this particular technology might be able to pr help prove that a piece of news is fake, but it's it will do not a lot, to be frank, to reduce the speed in which these things are shared across the internet. So here's to hoping that this is the, the time where we actually go and do something 
and to start to actually incorporate in our behavior the 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 fact checking which is why these things are useful is now you have a source that tells you when this original piece of news that is now traceable has been uh, originated so if we incorporate that checking habit in our own behavior well then uh, these pieces of tooling across the internet might become very handy otherwise uh, we won't get there so we're still hoping that this is uh, something that now with i want to say quote unquote threat of ai uh, in all uh, shapes and forms cannot be addressed again by blockchain If you're listening to this podcast, you probably heard me say that without better UX, there won't be mass adoption of Web3. Um, you probably heard me say, probably <laughs> read me uh, writing about it. So, um, and I think we're, we're seeing progress. Um, we, uh, we saw last year the introduction of a concept called account abstraction uh, across especially VM chains where uh, a smart contract uh, plays the part of the wallet and kind of executes some of the user behavior on behalf of the user when interacting with the blockchain. One of the things that is possible to be done with account abstraction is to, yes, abstract the fee payment. It, it, it's possible to pay um, Ether or Matic to use, say, Ethereum or Polygon as chains uh, without even knowing that you're paying for those uh, gas fees using uh, those cryptocurrencies because the uh, account abstraction contract can actually go and sell some of your, say, USDC, swap it for the native token in that particular uh, blockchain, and you as a user wouldn't know you're paying a fee to use the infrastructure. Um, the thing is, this is a smart contract running on the chain. So now we have Arbitrum Orbit uh, introducing custom gas tokens, which means that any project running on Arbitrum Orbit can actually offer their tokens, their ERC-20 tokens, to pay for transaction fees, and then uh, the custom token function will help address the swap between that token fee and um and the fee in the blockchain, which means that you don't even have to have Ether or Arbitrum's native cryptocurrency to actually pay for fees and make it work for you. This concept in the Cardano ecosystem um, has an equivalent. It's called the Babel fees. And the Babel fees stems from the name, uh, the biblical name, um, the Tower of Babel, where people would uh, speak in different languages and couldn't uh, really connect with each other. But the Babel fees, it's the opposite concept where you can actually pay for transaction fees in the blockchain without having the actual native token of that blockchain, which again creates this abstraction and makes working with any blockchain a lot more intuitive. You don't have to guess, right? The parallel on the internet would be if for you to use the internet, you would have to say have in your bank account the currency from the country where you're visiting the website so let's say i, I want to visit a website in japan i would have to have um, yens on my bank accounts to pay for the megabytes that i'm downloading from the J japanese website um, that is the behavior we see in most blockchains today in projects like custom gas tokens on arbitrum orbit or the Babel fees in the Cardano ecosystem, the upcoming Babel fees in the Cardano ecosystem, what they do is that they abstract the need for you to uh, pay for your gas fees with that one specific cryptocurrency for that one specific blockchain, which makes it all the more user-friendly, which I hope makes it even better for people who are trying to break it into uh, Web3. So very interesting. There are a few a uh, few projects already uh, lined up in the orbit uh, <clears throat> in the orbit ecosystem. Uh, Outlayer, uh, Aviv World, uh, Caldera X Y Z, Conduit X Y Z, Polychain, Sanko Game, Shy Games, and and more. So if you are um, trying to break into Web three as a builder, 
this might be also one of the things that you might want to consider for your um, project UX to use account abstraction and also use custom guest tokens to make it easier for your users to not only find you, continue to use you, but also to keep using you because the UX is so much better. So again, here's my vote of confidence for Web3 that UX will be fixed. And I hope that 2024 is the year for us to do that. Web3 allows projects to compose, meaning you can actually use other smart contracts and tokens as infrastructure for your own smart contracts and tokens. And this um, displays well when you're trying to combine um, what I do best with what you do best and then create a third thing that makes uh, the work a better place. Um, this is very handy to understand how Derive, a global online brokerage uh, that specializes in uh, trading and derivatives, is doing with Bank, right? written BVNK, which is a global uh, regulated payments platform that specializes in, in crypto payments uh, in pairing with traditional uh, systems. They announced a partnership where um, Derive is now able to use Solana, Solana Pay for payments for their 2.5 million customers around the globe and make uh, them uh, possible to select uh, digital assets uh, as means of deposits and payments. Uh, this obviously comes on the back of the recent quote unquote uh, Solana summer uh, for which the market cap of Solana has grown uh, over $40 billion. And obviously market cap equates liquidity, which equates the ability to pay for things using digital assets. So it makes sense that Solana as is being used in this particular use case. And we obviously want to know whether this is just Solana, but also whether this is going to expand to other blockchains. Um, this collaboration between Bank and Derive uh, is part of Derive's uh, payment strategy to enable them to meet their demands for digital currencies based on uh, their global customer base and also uh, their um, customer requirements. Um, their decision stemming from requests, according to Tiago Garbim, uh, Senior Payment Solution Operations Executive at, at Derive, um, he said, and here I quote, we've noticed a growing interest in cryptocurrencies like Solana and Polygon among our clients. By partnering with Bank, we can effectively respond to their needs. Uh, we started with Solana due to high client demand, and we plan to expand our crypto payment options in the future. Uh, Bank's uh, excellent support has made this a very smooth transition, end quote. So this, again, as we see more and more of these institutional um, uh, players coming uh, on the back of clarity from regulators from major jurisdictions, that recall that just last week we saw Bitcoin spot ETF being approved by the SEC with a number of issuers uh, now approved to operate uh, the ETF. This slowly but surely gives the industry a little bit more legitimacy. It removes a lot of fear from traditional finance folks to use the infrastructure and the associated digital assets, which obviously have been has been preventing them from uh, uh, accessing the infrastructure not only as a asset class, but also as a payments infrastructure, which makes it easier 24-7 globally reachable for their um, trading and banking needs. So it's interesting to see a trading platform partnering with a crypto payments platform using a second, maybe third generation um, blockchain in, in Solana and hoping to expand to other blockchains as the business grows. This might be an indication that, uh, according to what we've seen, that crypto as an infrastructure is now here to stay. These changes in the regulatory landscape seem to point to a legitimacy of the industry. So we're hoping to see more of this coming across not only Europe, where they play, but also across the world, especially in the global south.
because the week was back full of news, here's more. JP Morgan and Bain launched their tokenization report with challenges and opportunities. TRM Labs renewed their crypto policy report for 2023. Nomura launches a Libre protocol and will launch with Raven Howard and Hamilton Lane tokenized funds. Circle, the issuer of, among others, the USDC stablecoin, filed for an IPO in the US. The BIS, the Swiss National Bank, and the World Bank are launching Promissa, a project for multi country promissory notes. Catch us online. We're on Instagram at Block Drops Podcast, on Twitter at Block Drops Pod or Xerox Mauricio. We're on Lens at blockdrops.lens. We have a newsletter on LinkedIn. Write to us at blockdropspodcast at gmail.com. And you can listen to the Block Drops Podcast at Spotify, Icolab, Febrabun Tech, and all of the other major streaming platforms. today for the people who share the links you will find in the episode notes. Tyron Loban, Ari Redboard, Tiago Amaral, Adi Tripathi, Pedro from Zarosfy, Leonardo Cavalcanti, Emma Meyer, and Carlos Arena. Don't forget to leave your ratings on your favorite player. This is all for today. Stay rare, stay weird. LFG. Mm-hmm.